Praise the Lord. And it is yours truly, Pastor T.W. Bell, pastor of the Last Stage Church located in the city of Nashville, Tennessee. And this is the day that the Lord has made. And we are rejoicing and we are glad therein. And so we bless God this morning for you, for this privilege, for this opportunity for us to come together in spirit and in truth and to fellowship in the word of God today. We thank God for you. We praise God to you, for you in Jesus name. Amen. It is amazing that we have come to the final month of the year. The year is just about gone and what a year it has been. Uh, but in spite of what we've dealt with and what we are faced with, God is still good and he's still worthy to be praised. We bless God. We bless God. We praise God in Jesus name. Somebody said, after all that I've been through, that I still got some joy. I still got a praise in my heart. I still got praise in my spirit. So we bless God this morning for each and everything that he's brought us through through this year. We thank God for you being with us. We thank God for you praying us through. We thank God, amen, for you being in partnership with us. We thank God for just the fellowship that we have enjoyed one with another. The Bible even declares, behold how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And we thank God in Jesus' name for those that have connected with us in Jesus' name. And so we're very grateful. We're very grateful. It's just um, uh, amazing that we are, have come to the last part of the year. And uh, I just want to en encourage you to, to keep trusting God. I want to encourage you to keep believing, amen. I want you to encourage you to keep praying and keep holding on to God's unchanging hand because we're living in a changing world. Our world is constantly changing. But one of the things that gives us confidence is that he is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And so we bless God for that uh, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Uh, we are going to turn our hearts towards prayer. I'm not going to prolong the service at all this morning in Jesus' name. We have so much to pray for. We, we have so much to pray for. The numbers with corona are skyrocketing. They're out of control. Uh, hospitals are, are at peak capacity. Uh, doctors and nurses are at their wits end. First responders are at their wits end. Over 280,000 people uh, and in this country alone have lost their lives. And so we have a lot to pray for. We, we're going to be praying in Jesus' name over these next couple of weeks. Uh, vaccinations are going to be approved and starting to be administered and over in the UK, they've already started administering it. And so we're very grateful. We're very thankful in Jesus name for that. But we have a lot to pray for. It is not over. It is not over. And we're just believing God in Jesus name that God is going to touch, that God is going to comfort. We need to pray for these final uh, few uh, weeks and days uh, of this presidency uh, that the Lord would touch and that there would be a smooth transition of power. Uh, for the incoming president-elect uh, in Jesus' name and for his staff. We, we just need to pray because we need God. Uh, we need God. Even some of the countries around the world, they are overwhelmed. And we need God to help them. We need God to touch them. We need God to move in Jesus' name. And, and I want to say this, that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much. We're praying with you. We're praying for your family. We're praying for your children. We're praying for the prodigal son and the prodigal daughter and for those that have stepped outside the will of God, that they would step back into the will of God in Jesus' name. And we're just believing God in Jesus' name that the best is yet to come. We're praying for pastors, for ministries. We're praying that the gospel would go forth and that it would do what it needs to do, that lives would be saved, that lives would be changed, that hearts would be mended and healed, and that God would be glorified in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And so this morning, let's turn our hearts towards prayer. Let's turn our minds towards prayer in Jesus' name. And I'm believing God with you for a miracle. I'm believing God with you for healing. I'm believing God with you for a breakthrough in Jesus' name. And we are upholding in this country these 280,000 families that have lost a loved one due to COVID-19. 
And so we're praying this morning in Jesus' name. And I'm believing that, amen, uh, I'm believing that what God promised you, that it's going to come to pass. I'm believing that what God, amen, has put in your spirit for this year, you ought to get excited because if God said he was going to do it this year and it's not done yet in these next 20 some days, that means God has to do it or he's going to be found a liar. And you know that he is not a man that he should lie and neither is he the son of man that he has to repent. So we're believing that God is going to fulfill his promises in your life this morning in Jesus name. With that said, in Jesus name, let us bow our heads and I don't care what it is. I don't care what, how difficult it is. Nothing is too hard for God. The Bible declares to us that he can do exceedingly and abundantly above what we ask or think according to the power that works in us. And God, God his, his capacity and his ability is not in question. The only thing that we wrestle with sometimes is his will. And then God can do it. And even if he decides not to do it, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to give him praise. It doesn't mean that I'm not going to give him glory. There's a dimension of faith that goes to the realm of, but if not, he's still able. And so we believe God this morning. We trust God this morning in Jesus' name. Every head is bowed. Every heart is clear. Every mind is clear. Grab your children. Grab your loved ones. Gather them in Jesus' name. Grab their hands. Bow their heads. With uh, Everyone, bow their, your heads. And we're going to go before God in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we love you this morning. In the name of Jesus, we praise you. We bless you. We lift you up, oh God. Hallelujah. We magnify your name. God, we give you glory. We give you praise and we give you honor in the wonderful name of Jesus. And God, we just say thank you for bringing us this far. We say thank you for being our strength and our joy and our peace and our hope. Thank you for being a bridge and for being a way maker, for being a shelter. Thank you for everything that you've done and for everything, God, hallelujah, that you're going to do. God, we just give you praise in this moment. We give you praise in this hour. God, we take inventory of your goodness and hallelujah, because of your goodness, God, the only thing that can come off of our lips is thanksgiving. The only thing that can come off of our lips, oh God, is, is praise unto you, oh God. So God, this morning in the name of Jesus, as we come, we say thank you for being an awesome God. We say thank you for being a good God. We say thank you for being our strength, our joy, our peace, our hope, our all. Thank you for being our healer. Thank you for being our keeper. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name for being our sustainer, oh God. Hallelujah. We love you this morning. We adore you. Uh, God, we magnify you. God, we exalt you, God. Hallelujah. And God, even, ah, we got a hallelujah anyhow praise. God, even though we may have been through some things, even though we may have faced some things, God, you've been with us in the fire. You've been with us through the flood, oh God. And we thank you this morning in the wonderful name of Jesus. We thank you for the past 11 months, oh God. Our uh, God, even though... We've been faced with difficulty. We've been able to face it because you've been our strength. You've been our joy. You've been our hope. You've been our all in all. You've been our anchor that's both sure and steadfast. You've held us. You've kept us, oh God. And for that, we're grateful. For that, we give you glory. For that, we give you praise. For that, we give you honor, oh God. In the wonderful name of Jesus and God this morning in Jesus name, we come humbly, but yet boldly to the throne of grace. We come, God, that we might obtain the help and the mercy that we need, oh God. And we come, God, seeking your face and not your hand, oh God. Uh, God, we want to fellowship with you. We, we, we want to have communion with you, oh God. Hallelujah, God. We want to hear you speak, oh God, to our soul, to our spirit, and to our hearts this morning in the wonderful name of Jesus. And oh God, we just believe you right now that it's already worked out. We believe you that the way is already made, that the door 
is already open. So God, we don't wait, hallelujah, to receive, but we send up praise right now. We give you thanks right now. We bless you right now. We are God. We lift you up right now in the name of Jesus. And oh God, this morning, as we come, God, we, we bring before you, our God, these 280,000 families in our country that have had to bury a loved one due to corona, oh God. And Father, we just ask you to comfort their hearts, comfort their minds, comfort their spirits, oh God. Our God, right now, be God right now, their strength. And we ask you right now, in the name of Jesus, God, hallelujah, that you would just touch him. You would just move in this circumstance. Father, we understand that the answers, oh God, are hidden with you. We understand that the cure and the healing is in you, O oh God. So, God, we appeal to your power. We appeal to your authority. We appeal to your sovereignty, O oh God. We look to you this morning in the wonderful name of Jesus. And, O oh God, right now. We lift up, God, right now, ah, God, the medical industry and the medical field, oh God. We lift up every doctor that's overwhelmed. We lift up every doctor that's fatigued. And we lift up every nurse, oh God. And we pray, God, now that you would replenish them, God, where they've been depleted. We pray, God, now that you would strengthen them, oh God, where they're weakened, oh God. And God, right now, to that one that is overwhelmed, God, we ask you to calm their spirit to calm their hearts. And ah, God, we pray that they would be led to the rock that's higher than them, which is you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Do it right now in Jesus' name. Remember the staff that worked at hospitals this morning. Remember every God right now attending, every God nutritionist, uh, God, every janitor, God, everyone who works on a floor with COVID, God. And we just pray, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, your strength, your renewing, oh God, your glory, God, in the wonderful name of Jesus. And Lord, right now, we lift up the powers that be, oh God. We lift up our president. We lift up kings and queens. And we lift up prime ministers and those that are in authority, God. We lift up those that are running countries and the world, oh God. And we pray, God, right now, ah, God, that the egos of men, God, ah, God, would be decreased and that you would be increased. We pray that the egos and, and the desires of men would be moved out the way. That God, right now, the love of humanity would take front stage, oh God. That God right now, policies and procedures will be put in place where lives can be saved, oh God. Do it in the wonderful name of Jesus. Touch the countries, oh God, that are not as fortunate as we are. Those, oh God, that are limited in their resources and limited in their supplies, oh God. Do it in the name of Jesus. And oh God, this morning in Jesus' name, we just need you to stretch out your hand we just need you to release your love, to release your strength, to release your joy. And Father, right now, everyone that's tuned in this morning, everyone that's touching and agreeing with us this morning, we pray a blessing. We pray strength and we pray breakthrough through their household. We pray a miracle in the name of Jesus. We pray recovery for those that are recovering. We pray strength to those that are tired. We pray, God, right now, renewing to those, God, right now, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, that are confused, oh God. We pray, God, now in the name of Jesus that your glory would be revealed and your power would be made manifest. And God, now open the store of heaven. Open, God, right now in Jesus' name your word to us. Open your glory unto us that we may be able to behold the good things that is found written in your law. Father, we thank you this morning. We love you this morning. And we do bless you. And Lord, this morning in the name of Jesus, as we pray, remember those that are less fortunate, God. Remember those, God, that don't have adequate supply. Remember those that don't have adequate income and adequate resources. Remember those that are in soup kitchens and those that are homeless this morning and those that are on the street. Remember the families that are in jeopardy of losing their place, oh God, losing their home and losing their apartments. Remember those who benefits are running out. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch the men that 
are making the decisions, God, that they would come, God, to a conclusion that humanity is more important than politics. Do it in the name of Jesus. And, oh, God, right now, just set the atmosphere. Mm. That, hey, God, set the atmosphere that we would be able to worship you. Set the atmosphere that we would be able to glorify you. We would be able to praise you and to lift you up. And God, right now, we give you total praise. We give you total glory. We give you total honor. Bless young people, God, that are not God right now, taking God right now the precautions that need to be taken. Bless them in a special way. Help them to understand that this is serious, oh God. And God, right now, in the name of Jesus, remember the children that are going back and forth in the schools, oh God. Touch them and be with them, God. And Lord, just cover them even now. We thank you. We love you. We praise you. We bless you. And we do adore you in the wonderful name of Jesus. We thank you right now. We bless you right now. We love you right now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Just worship God. Come on, just lift your hands and lift your hearts and give God glory because God has heard us. God has heard us. God has heard us. He's working on it right now. He's working on it right now. Your prayer is being answered. Doors are being opened. The way is being made. Strength is being released. Joy is coming back. Oh my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love God. We love God. And, and I'm so grateful this morning in Jesus' name. I'm so grateful. And my heart goes out to Amen. Those uh, that are, are in dire situations, my heart goes out to those, amen, that stand in need of help. And we're praying that God would send help. We're praying that God would, would strengthen, that God would bless, that, that God would touch. And for those of us that he's been good to, we have so much to be grateful for. We have so much to be grateful for. It don't have to be as good as it is. It doesn't have to be the way that it is. It's just the mercy and the goodness of God. Amen. Amen. It's because God loves us so much that he's covered us and protected us and blessed us and supplied our needs according to his riches and according to his glory. And we thank God for that this morning in Jesus name. We truly do. We truly do. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted that it's as good as it, as it is. Don't take it for granted that you have what you have. Don't take it for granted that you wear you are, amen, because if God removes his hand, if God removes his favor, if God removes his grace, we would fall in the same situation that others may find they fell in, but because of God's love, we thank him, we thank him, we thank him. This morning, I want to take this privilege and this opportunity to officially welcome you, amen, welcome you into Last Day's Church Amen. Where the spirit of the Lord is. Amen. Welcome you into the liberty that's found by being in God's presence. We welcome you to worship. We welcome you to shout, to lift your hands, to get your praise on. We welcome you in Jesus' name. And we don't take it for granted. There's a myriad of churches that you could be tuned into. There's a myriad of religious things that you could be doing. But we thank God that you've taken the time to welcome us into your space, to welcome us into your heart and into your home as well. And we, we're very grateful in Jesus' name. We understand in Jesus' name that, that God ordered us together. He ordered our steps that we might be able to, to delight in the way. And so we thank God, amen, for the warm spirit that you have. And I, I pray that you can feel the love that we have for you as well in Jesus' name. And so, amen, we welcome, we welcome you and thank you again for welcoming us. And so, amen, as I said, it is the last month of the year and uh, we have not uh, quoted it in quite some time. Uh, our declaration for the year was a declaration of perfect vision. And one of the things that I've come to really see clearly is that men are not in control, that God is in control. And if you see nothing else, you need to see that, that God is in control in Jesus' name. And so we bless God. We bless God because my vision is clear now. I understand. I understand that if God don't do it, it can't be done. That if God don't move, it ain't going to move. That if God doesn't speak, 
is not going to speak. So we bless God in Jesus and we bless God. And so at this time, amen, um, we're going to move into the word of the Lord. And I just want to share something very practical with you this morning in Jesus name. Very, very practical. And, and I want to say this to you. Um, in the rustle and bustle of this season. It's a beautiful season. Uh, there's a song that said it's the most wonderful time of the year. And it really is because during this time of the year, the hearts of people are tender. The, the hearts of people are benevolent. The hearts of people are kind. And, and so uh, why don't you be that person that shows someone that kindness? And it can be as simple as giving them a cup of coffee or just holding the door open with a smile for them. Uh, amen. Make somebody's day by being kind uh, in Jesus' name. Uh, and I, I want to say this to you. I want to say this to you, to the saints of God. Use this time in the, this last part of the year to spend some quiet time with God. You and your, you and God, nobody else. Not you and the kids, not you and the husband, not you and God, not you and the wife, you and God. Amen. Put your ear to his bosom so you can hear his heartbeat, so you can hear what he is saying to you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I spent, I plan on spending some quiet time. I plan on spending some, some time reflecting and in inflection, looking in. I plan on spending some time listening, just listening to God and trying to hear his voice. And so this morning, in Jesus' name, I would like to uh, turn to the word of God and invite your attention to the book of Psalms, chapter number 27. And you've heard this before, but I just want to share a simple, practical thought with you this morning out of Psalms 27. And we are going to look at two verses. We're going to look at verse 13 and verse 14. And this is a Psalms of David, and he is praying, and he has prayed, and God has shared, showed some things to him, and he says this in verse 13, Psalms 27 and 13, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 14, he says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. I say, wait on the Lord. Excuse me, I read that long. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of this word. And I simply want to talk to you about while you wait. What are you doing while you wait? What is your mindset while you wait? While you wait. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, now bless this word as it prepares to go forth. Allow it to penetrate the heart. Allow it to go forth in Jesus' name. Allow it to find good ground to, to be planted in. Allow it to bud and to bring forth. And don't allow it to come back void. We thank you. We love you. And we do praise you in Jesus' name. While you wait. While you wait. One thing that we can say about 2020 is all of us are waiting on COVID to be moved out the way. All of us are waiting to get back to some realm of what we call normal. Even though we may not ever get there, we're all waiting for it. All of us are waiting on God to move. We're waiting on a door to open. We're waiting on 
the job offer. We're waiting on the test results. We're waiting on something. But while we wait, it is important to understand that how we wait is just as important as to why we wait. Mm. Uh, let me say that again. Let me say that again for somebody who didn't hear me. How you wait is just as important as to why you wait. And the reason I say that is because even though we're all waiting, all of us are not waiting with the right spirit. Even though we're all waiting, all of us don't have the proper disposition that we should have in order to wait on our victory. Some of us are waiting, but we got a bad attitude. We're waiting but we got a, a messed up mindset. Uh, some of us are waiting and our spirit is, is wrong. And I want you to understand the reason David said this in Psalms 27 is because David understood after going through what he went through and having to wait on God that you gotta wait on God with the right attitude. So I'll say it again. How you wait is just as important as to why you wait. Oh, praise the name of our God. And, and so David said something in the 13th verse. He said, I would have fainted. I had fainted. And, and I want to tell you this, that 2020 has been a year where a lot of people would have fainted. And even the saints of God would have fainted. And the only reason we didn't faint and we haven't faint and we're not going to faint is because of what David said in the second clause of the 13th verse. He says, I would have fainted unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The, the only reason that some of us have not thrown in the towel and have not fainted and have not gave up is because of our faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for. And it is the evidence of the things that we cannot see. It is because of our faith when, when we don't know which way to turn and we didn't know which way to go. Our faith said, drop your anchor and stand here until you see God show up. Oh my God, I, I wish I had a witness in this house. The only reason that some of us uh, don't throw the towel in and don't pull our hair out and don't have a nervous breakdown is because we know that the God we serve is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what we ask to think. Ah, oh God, our faith has become an anchor. Our faith, ah, oh God, holds us. And, and then even though we've seen some terrible things, some of us have lost incomes and some of us have been a furloughed and laid off of our jobs and some of us amen we didn't know how we was gonna make it but hallelujah because of the power of faith we kept walking because we walked by faith and not by sight and ah, God we we couldn't see our way out but we kept walking because oh ah, my God something on the inside of us told us that everything is gone be all right. And because of that spirit of faith and because of that confidence in the God that we serve, we have not fainted. We have not thrown the towel in. We, we haven't given up, amen, on our dream or 
on our hope, hallelujah. We haven't cast away our confidence because our confidence has great recompense of reward. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And we're gonna hold on to it to, to the end of our salvation. So David understood that because he believed in God, it was the only thing that didn't allow him to faint. It was the only thing. It didn't mean that he didn't have some fainting circumstances. Yeah, yeah, we all got some fainting circumstances. We're all dealing with a struggle. We're all in some kind of battle. We're all dealing with some kind of opposition or some type of antagonizing force. But the difference is, hallelujah, some of us understand that the weapon will form, but it ain't going to prosper. Oh, my God. Some of us realize that we are more than conquerors through him that love us. Oh, my God. And so, hallelujah, we're not going to faint. We're not going to fall out. We're not going to back up. We're not going to turn around. We're not going to take no for an answer. We might not be able to do it right at this moment, but ah, oh my God, a delay is not a denial. Ah, oh my God. And so we believe that victory shall be ours. Hallelujah. But while we're waiting, while we're anticipating, ah, oh my God, God's movement, we got to make sure that we have the right spirit and we got to make sure that we have the right heart because some of us, ah, my God, we're waiting, but we're murmuring and we're complaining and murmuring and complaining. All it does is, is eat away at your spirit. Murmuring and complaining. All it does is eat away at your faith. Murmuring. The Bible tells us in Philippians chapter 2 that we ought to do all things without murmuring and disputing or murmuring and complaining. And so while I'm waiting, I can't be fussing and murmuring all the time. God should have been here. The door should have been open. This should have happened by now. Don't you know that? that God knows what he's doing? Don't you recognize that God is in control? So you need to hush your mouth or silencio povivo or, oh my God, kayate. Ah, shut up. Stop complaining. Stop talking so much. Stop being how you are. Ah, my God, you're murmuring. Ah, my God, not only does it agitate you, it agitates everybody that's around you. Oh my God, nobody wants to be around somebody that's complaining all the time. Oh my God, you, you ought to be speaking faith. You ought to be speaking uh, expectation. You ought to be speaking, oh my God, about when you're going to testify. Oh my God. And so while you're waiting, you, you have to make sure that you don't get up caught up in a murmuring and a complaining spirit. And this is what, ah, my God, David understood. And so why would David say, wait on the Lord, I say, and be of good courage? Why would he tell us that? So, so he gives us two instructions. He gives us one instruction is to wait. And it's difficult for some of us to wait because we want to be in control. It's difficult for some of us to wait because we feel like we got to be doing something, ah, my God, in order to get the victory. Ah, my God. But then David gave a second instruction, which is to be of good courage. And the Hebrew term is shazog, and it literally means to play the man or to play the role. Ah, my God. In other words, it means to faith it until you make it. In other words, you got to play the role while you're waiting on God. In other words, you got to play the man while you're waiting on God to bring you out, while you're waiting on God to bring you through. You got to have a good spirit. You got to be of good courage. You got to know huh, that this is not your final end. You have got to know that God has not brought you this far. I know I'm talking to somebody.
time. God hasn't brought you this far. Open these doors. Made these ways for you to faint on him now. He has not brought you this far. Open these doors. Made these ways for you to throw the towel in and to give up now. Uh, the devil is a liar. Ah, uh, my God. Hallelujah. Somebody say it, that the devil is a liar. Hallelujah. I'm going to receive my miracle. I'm going to get my breakthrough. I'm going to get my increase. I'm going to go to the next level. I'm going to do what God said I can do. I'm going to be who God said that I am. Oh my God, I'm going to possess what God said is mine. Oh my God. Oh, but while I'm waiting, I got to, amen, I got to have dress rehearsal. Oh God, a lot of people have made the mistake of thinking, oh God, that I have money. A lot of people have made the mistake of thinking, ah, my God, that I come, ah, my God, from a silver spoon background, ah, my God, but I don't, ah, I don't come from that background, ah, my God, and I don't have a lot of money, oh, praise the name of our God, but I've learned how to have dress rehearsal, I've learned how to walk as if, ah, my God, I'm a king's kid, I've learned how to carry myself in a man manner ah, that would make you think, ah, my God, that I come from a silver spoon. Oh, praise the name of our God. But all I know is, ah, God, is that I come from amen, nowhere. I, I know that God reached down in the muck and the mire clay. And I know that he brought me out. And I know that he delivered me out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. And that's why it ain't a problem for me to give God praise. Ah, my God. When I think about where it brought me from, when I look back and I see the puddles of blood and, and I recognize the things that he's done for me, ah, God, I can't help but give him a praise. And while I'm waiting, I'm going to praise him. While I'm waiting, I'm going to lift him up. While I'm waiting, I'm going to give him the glory that only he deserves. Somebody clap your hands and Tell our God, thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. So David recognized that, oh, my God, that while you're waiting, you have to wait in the right spirit. And this is why he said, be of good courage. You cannot be depressed while you're waiting. Oh, my God. You cannot be angry while you're waiting. Oh, my God. You cannot have a revengeful spirit why are you waiting? Ah, my God. And see, some people are waiting and, and, and they're waiting with the wrong attitude. They're waiting with the wrong spirit. Hallelujah. So as I begin to look in the scripture, amen. Hallelujah. In verse ah, number, ah, Proverbs 20 and 22. I want you to get this in Jesus' name. Ah, because some of us are waiting to get even. Some of us wanting to say, I told you so. Some of us want revenge and you got to know and understand that you can't get revenge and you can't have a revengeful spirit. You can't have a told you so spirit. Look what, oh my God, Proverbs 20 and 22 said. The Bible says here, say not thou that I will re recompense evil. You can't pay back evil with evil. Uh, you cannot want to get even. Uh, you cannot want to see your enemy's demise. We, we learned that a couple weeks ago, uh, that we cannot rejoice when our enemies fall or when our enemies stumble because the Bible says that if the Lord see you like that, that it'll give him displeasure and he will move his wrath from off your enemy. Your enemy is already dealing with God's wrath, but when you begin to rejoice in it, uh, Oh my God, you got the wrong spirit. So, amen. Proverbs 20 and 22 says, uh, Say not thou, I will recompense evil. But he says, But wait on the Lord and what? He shall save thee. Oh my God, you, you got to learn how to wait on God to open doors. Now, why is it that I got to wait on God? Because I, I want you to understand something. Waiting on God is important because I, I, I'm getting ready to jump a fence. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter number three 
teaches us something that a lot of people don't catch. The Bible said to everything there is a season, a zemon, an occasion, an opportunity. And I want you to catch something. Seasons are typically two, three, four months. Seasons. That's why we got four seasons and they normally last about three months. And so he says to everything there is a season. Ah, oh my God. But to every purpose, hey, there is a time to every purpose. Now, season is more broad and season is in general, but time is more specific. And the reason I say that is because right now, while you're waiting on God, you're waiting on God because you want to be in time with God. Ah, let me say something to you. I, I don't want to move before God. I want to wait on him. I don't want to move before God. I don't want to come behind God. If I move before him, it means that I've stepped out on my own sovereignty. If I move before him, it means that I've decided that I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And I'm hoping and praying that he would get involved in what I've decided to do. Can I tell you this? You cannot operate like that. You got to wait till you feel the unction from God. You got to wait until God moves you. And, and, and the reason you don't want to be behind God is because if you be behind God, you've missed the move of God. Ah, but Ecclesiastes 3 and 11 says that God has made everything beautiful when in his time. Ah, my God, I want to be on his time. So I got to learn how to wait on God until God tells me to move. And so as we begin to look at this and take it a little bit further, I want you to understand something, hallelujah, that when you have to stand still, when you've got to wait on God, I know that it's always difficult because it's against our nature to stand still. It's against our nature, ah God, not to do anything. But let me say something. While you're standing still, you ought to be worshiping while you wait. While you're standing still, you ought to be praying while you wait. While you're standing still, you ought to be in that ministry while you wait. Ah my God, I want you to understand that while you're waiting, you ain't got to just twiddle your fingers. You still can be in the middle, middle of where God wants you to be at. Oh my God, let's go to the book of Exodus chapter number 14. And we begin to understand why we wait on God out of Exodus 14. Uh, because when you understand that sometimes that God tells you to stand still and you don't want to stand still, but if you move, you're going forward without the protection of God. Ah, my God, you ain't saying nothing. If you move, amen, and you and you go forward, ah, God is not there. But I, I want to be like Moses. Moses told God, ah, except your presence go with me, that I will not go. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Moses told God that except your presence be there, except you move, I'm not going to move. And somebody ought to, hey, my God, stand still. And look what the Bible says in Exodus number 14. Uh, the Bible says, hallelujah, oh God, in Exodus 14 and 13, where Moses and the children of Israel are in a, in a, in a tight situation, just like some of us are in a tight situation. Oh God, we, we want to go forward, but and we can't. We, we can't go backwards because the enemy is behind us, and we're boxed in on every side. Oh God, it, it seems like, oh God, you can't move to the left and you can't move to the right and you know that what's behind you is not good for you and and oh my God, there, uh, there's something blocking you from moving forward. Ah, uh, my God. And so uh, the children of Israel are in a tight situation and Moses begins to seek God and just like some of us need to seek God and the Bible begins to say that uh, God and Moses in verse 13, Moses said unto the people, fear ye not, because while you are waiting on God, you cannot be, uh, God, encompassed with fear, uh, for God has not given up the spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. You got to know and you got to understand uh, God has not brought you here uh, for you to be scared out of your wits in now. So he says, 
fear not. He says, stand still. Uh, stop yourself. Drop your anchor. Tell the devil that I ain't going nowhere. That I'm not going to back up. That I'm not going to turn around. That I'm not going to tuck my tail and run. That I'm going to stay right here. And I'm going to see the salvation of God. What do you mean the salvation? Uh, in this setting, salvation means deliverance. Salvation means that God is going to come rescue you from where you are. Oh God, hallelujah. Somebody say, help is on the way. God is about to rescue you. God is about to deliver you. God is about to bring you out. Uh, you can't stay. You can't move. You can't jump out of the frying pan into the fire. You better stand still and wait on God. He says this. You're going to see the salvation of the Lord, the deliverance. You're going to see God's rescuing you. And not only is he going to rescue you, he says to them, the Egyptians and the enemy that you see today, you ain't going to see no more. I speak this and I, I speak it prophetically to somebody's spirit. The things that you're dealing with, you ain't going to deal with them no more. The circumstances that you're looking at and that's behind you, they ain't going to be behind you no more. God is going to deliver you. He's going to rescue you. And you ain't going to have to deal with that no more. Oh, praise the name of our God. I wish somebody would just say, thank you, Lord. Somebody that believe him, say, thank you, Lord. Thank you that you're not going to deal with it no more. Thank you that you ain't got to go there no more. Thank you that it's going to be moved out the way. But you got to stand still. And look what he says in verse 14. The Lord shall fight for you. Because whenever you're standing still, and God has told you to stand still, it means that God is preparing your miracle while you're in this holding station. And it also means that God is going to fight for you. And I want to tell you something, baby. When God fight for you, you ain't got to worry about whether or not your enemy is going, going to be subdued. You ain't got to worry about whether or not you're going to win. God never loses any battles. So he says, stand still. And God is going to fight for you. And standing still is extremely difficult. It's hard to wait. It's hard to understand which way to turn. And God has told you to stand still. But see, I'm going to tell you something. One of the things that helps me stand still is what I know. Because in Psalms 46 and 10, let's look at that real quick. Psalms 46 and 10. Oh, my God. He says this. And you got to get this. Be still. And what causes me to be able to be still? He says, and know that I'm God. Sometimes what I know. Is the only thing that keeps me standing still. Sometimes what I know is the only thing that anchors me. Sometimes what I know is the only thing that holds me. I'm going to tell somebody right now, you know too much. I'm going to tell somebody right now, you've seen too much. You know too much to be pulling your hair out. You know too much to be pacing the floor. You know too much to be losing your joy. You know too much not to have peace of mind. Stand still and know that he is God. Know that he rules in the kingdom of men. Know that he is in control. Know that he has you in the palm of his hand and that can no man snatch you out of his hand. Be still. Don't walk out of his hand. Can't nobody snatch you out, but you can walk out. Be still. Mm. I hope somebody is getting this. Know that he is God and that he will be exalted. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. While you're waiting, while you're waiting. Let me, let me move, let me, let me, let me move. I want to share something with you because how you wait 
is just as important as why you wait. We wait because we're waiting on his timing. We wait because we're waiting on his sovereignty. We wait because we know he's in control. We wait because he know we know that he's setting things up. Well, how is he setting things up? All things is working together for the good to them that love him and are called according to his purpose, his proposal, his prophecies, his intention. He's setting things up for you. And see, when God gives you the green light, you walk through. When God gives you the green light, things fall in place. Hallelujah. I'm a witness. In God's time, everything is beautiful. When God, when God tells you go, he lays things out, he puts it in order, sequential order, and it flows and it happens the way he ordained it to. But I want to talk to you about something that's very difficult because some of us are waiting and we're waiting with the wrong attitude. We're waiting with the wrong spirit. While you wait, you got to make sure you wait with the right heart. You got to wait, make sure that you wait with the right mind. Now, I'm reminded of this story. In the book of John, chapter 5, there is a pool that is called Bethesda. The Bible says that it has five porches. And in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk. Right now, a whole lot of people are waiting on God. A whole lot of people are around, amen, the place where God is going to move. Impotent folk, blind, heart, withering. And one of the things that's, that's, that's difficult is to wait while something's withering. Withering is a slow death. Withering, you, you can see the petals on the rose drying out. You, you can see the stems getting dry. You can see the color leaving. You can see blackness setting in withering, but you still got to wait. And the Bible says in these later, a great multitude of impotent folk, blind heart, withering, waiting on the moving of the water. You're waiting on God to move. You're waiting on God to show up. And in this setting, these people are here because the Bible says that an angel went down at a certain season in the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever first stepped in after the troubling of the water was made whole of whatever disease he had. Why are you waiting? But look at this, look at this. There are a lot of people that are like this next impotent man. The Bible says, and there was a certain man there which had an infirmity 38 years. He's had an issue. He's had an asthenia, an infirmity, a sickness, a weakness. And he's been in this condition for 38 years. And the Bible says that when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he'd been in that condition, I want to tell somebody, Jesus know what you're dealing with. Jesus know where you are. He knows what's in front of you, but I'm just trying to encourage you to wait with the right spirit. And so when Jesus saw this man lying there and knew that he'd been in that condition for a long time, Jesus asked the man a question. And the question was, wilt thou be made whole? Not Will you be healed? But will you be made whole? And I want to tell you, in these days, God is making folks whole. God is going to remove the scar. He's going to remove the pain. He's going to make you whole. But will you be made whole? Because while you've been waiting on God to show up and to move and to make you whole, what has been the psychological condition of your mind? And I ask this for a reason. Because this man had become psychologically conditioned. Why do I say that? Because look at what he says in verse 7. He says, the impotent man answered him, sir, I have no man. Can I tell you this? 
A man can never make you whole anyway. A woman can never make you whole anyway. Ah, oh my God. Wilt thou be made whole? He is in a psychologically conditioned place. Look what he said. He says, there is no man to help me when the water is troubled to put me in the pool. Number one, he's messed up and his mind is messed up because he's got an issue with people now because he thinks nobody will help him. And then, number two, I want you to get this. He's tired of seeing other people get a breakthrough when he don't get nothing. He says, but when I'm coming, somebody else steps down in the pool and gets that miracle. Hey, my God. Somebody, hey man, you got to make sure that you keep your mind in the right place. Because now, listen to this. This man is psychologically conditioned because he knows where the move is going to take place at. Guess what? He knows who is going to do the move, but he's come to the conclusion that it ain't going to be him that get the move. The devil is a liar. Oh my God. I wish I had a witness. Shot. I wish I had a witness in this house. I want somebody to say it out loud. I'm going to get the move today. It's going to be me. I'm going to get the breakthrough. I'm going to get the miracle. I'm going to get the healing. I'm going to get the joy. Oh my God. God is going to move on my behalf. I'm not going to be psychologically conditioned. This man was psychologically conditioned to go where he knew God was going to be, but yet have in his mind that it ain't going to be him. Mm. The devil is a liar. We break that mindset. We break that frame of that train of thought. We ask God to renew your mind by the washing of the water of the word. We ask God to renew your mind so that when you go to the place where God moves at, you say, it's me, God. And I know you're going to show up. This man was psychologically conditioned. This man had got to the place that he was waiting, but he wasn't waiting in expectation. He wasn't waiting in expectation that it was going to be him. He was waiting knowing that it's going to be somebody else. But I believe God, that God want to do a miracle for you. I believe that God wants to perform a miracle for you. While you're waiting, have the right spirit. Have the right mindset. While you are waiting, Ask God to renew your spirit. And I want to say this. You've heard it before. That they that wait upon the Lord. He shall renew their strength. They're going to mount up with wings of an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk. And not faint. Hallelujah. Just like David said. I ain't going to faint. I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Isaiah ended it up and said they're going to walk and not faint. Hallelujah. While you wait, I pray that this has blessed you. I pray that your spirit has been in encouraged. I pray that your heart has been encouraged. I'm waiting on God, but I'm waiting with a good spirit. I'm waiting in expectation. I'm waiting knowing that it's going to be me. Hallelujah. I'm waiting knowing that God is going to do above what I can ask or think according to the power that works in me. I love you today. God bless you today. Be encouraged. Wait on the Lord, I say. And again, I say wait. Amen. I want to say this to you. Sow a seed in Jesus' name. If this message has blessed you, if this message has encouraged you, if this message has helped you, if it's motivated you to wait in the right area and the right mindset and the right, the right spirit. Amen. Sow a seed in Jesus' name. Go to www.lastdayschurch.org. You can go to a link there and go to Givelify and you can give. Sow a seed. Be a blessing in Jesus' name. And so we thank God for you. We thank God for you. And, and here... If you need a church home or if you want to connect with us in Jesus' name, amen, get in touch and reach out in Jesus' name. You can go to our website. You can get in touch with us in Jesus' name. Let us know. Well, amen. We'd love to speak with you. We'd love to pray with you. We'd love to believe with you in Jesus' name. While you wait, wait knowing that the God you serve is an awesome God. I love you. As usual, myself and Sister First Lady Bell, Dr. Bell, we miss you. We love you. We're praying for you. 
And until we meet again, God bless you in Jesus' name.